Come on and get your sign. Come on and get your sign. What up, y'all? It's your boy JB, aka Spoken, and I am here with another thing of unspoken truth. Now, this right here is a video, a podcast about walking out of 2020, what we've been through, and walking into 2021. So, I'm going to give y'all a 2020 recap, but I'm also going to bring this on in into 2021 on what's currently happening right now. So, y'all be patient with me with where I'm about to take this, okay? I appreciate everybody that's been tuning in to the Unspoken Truth Podcast show radio show this right here is episode 99 of unspoken truth and the episode is called protect your temple walking from 2020 into 2021 lesson points so make sure you subscribe hit the notification bell subscribe to the podcast on apple subscribe to the youtube channel all that okay this right here is the first real official video of 2021 so shout out to everybody that made it over congratulations you should be thanking god right now well, let me go ahead and jump right on into it because I don't want to waste no time. So 2020 ain't have not damn mercy on anybody. But I just want to say this. There's a blessing in everything if you seek it. There's a blessing in everything if you seek it. Some of y'all need to sit your ass down somewhere with them family, them kids. There's a blessing in everything if you seek it. Going on into the year 2020, everybody and their mama had big plans in motion. All kind of dates set up. Hell, me and my old lady were planning on hitting up the Millennial Tour. But that ain't happened. Right along with everything else. I mean, it's 2020. Right on the even mark like the 1800s through 1900s, 2010, and 2020. I had plans. I know you had them. Now, 2018, I started off by saying, around that time, we were in the alignment, protect your energy, and pull your card season. And I think it's safe that we all can agree that all that definitely happened. Especially 2020, pull your card. Lord have mercy. Disclaimer, when I mention pull your card, alignment and protect your energy, just know that neither can work without the help of the other. You need all three in order to progress in this seasonal game of life. In order to align, sometimes things have to be shaken up, AKA get your card pulled. In order to regroup, think, and protect yourself in areas where you are weak so you can strengthen yourself and survive and strive. And sometimes you align first, and then the next level you're currently walking will have challenges that will pull your card. Either which way it goes, you can't run from it. It applies in all areas of life, the good, the bad, don't matter. Which leads me to Kobe Bean Bryant. Rest in power to a straight soldier. One of my childhood heroes. I feel like what happened to Kobe on the helicopter crash along with his daughter couldn't have set the year off more for what was about to come later. It was almost like God delivered us a sign that shit wasn't gonna go right. You ain't even have to be psychic to be aware. You could just feel it. Everything felt dark and all out of place after Kobe left. Kobe died right before COVID landed. Then COVID came with three dozens of Hail Marys and two point conversions to kick our ass. It's crazy because Kobe's last post was LeBron, and the Lakers ended up winning the title the same year Bean died in a bubble setting that Kobe would have never guessed would have taken place. Let me give a shout out to everybody who has lost their life in 2020, and I know I'm going to miss some, so just forgive me. Casanova and G Herbo got swept up by the feds. Kodak still in prison getting his ass whooped by the guards. Zoe Dollars got shot. Survived. A Dallas dentist turned rapper doing quite well for himself with his own dentist office got shot. Survived. And 6 9 I cheer back in these streets free as a bird still taunting the wolves. Now back to COVID-19. Earlier this year I made a poem called This Ain't The Time. I said so I decided to use my God-given skills to tell y'all this year, COVID-19 ain't it. 
but at the same time it is. Some of y'all need to sit your ass down somewhere with them family, them kids. There's a blessing in everything if you seek it. Meaning that 2020 wasn't all that bad. There was some good too. Oh yeah, there was a lot of good. And I felt like I was already prepared for COVID because I was already in the house two years prior. So I found a way to cope, vibe, study, and work under uncomfortable circumstances when it came to my career. But this was a shout out darkness year for everybody and damn it, every man and woman for themselves. And I mean for yourself. You're on your own. Can't depend on nobody to hold your hand and help you out. Cause bitch, I ain't happy either. But if you were one of the ones that said, just like many, man, throw this whole year away, man. Oh, I can't stand 2020. Throw this whole year away, man. I'm sick of it. Then most likely that's the type of year you had and still gonna have in 2021 if you don't change your mindset. Protect your energy. We should all know by now that if these last few years ain't teach you a valuable lesson about energy, I don't know what to tell you. COVID had folks clearing the grocery stores, all the aisles, taking all the toilet paper, meat, juice. We had to go on an international shutdown because China sent something over here that got us all bent out of shit. And did anybody notice how civilians was fighting the government last year? And then the only thing that made them stop turning up was COVID. Now, I ain't saying nothing. Ain't it just funny how they just stopped? They were turning all up. Government couldn't stop from fighting. Them Chinese people were going crazy. Then COVID came, go city. Got people around the world losing their jobs left and right. Kids in virtual home schools stressing the hell out of these parents and teachers. Uh, if little Timmy has two, you don't, don't got it. And uh, what's the girl? Hey, uh, uh, read the question again. Cause I can't even understand what you're saying. You're reading too fast. That's probably why can't nobody get it. Two right Daddy here. They had two. How many you got? How many I you mean, got in your head? What they have together? One. No, count it. Yelling at me. Two, three, four. That's four fingers. What's the answer? Hey, hey. Kids out of school, then they went back. Then virtual homeschool classes, that was a complete mess. and still is. Right, so if you look, uh, we're 0.15% higher than 2019. Uh -oh. uh, we started this quarter off at 2.75%. Holy shit. Uh -oh. Daniel. God. I don't think he's Daniel. Daniel. Can you do that for us? Daniel. Daniel. Call, oh call, my god! Call Daniel on his cell. Call That's Daniel really on his cell. Oh, how, how do we turn this oh, shit. off? Shit. Wow! We can't. Oh hell no! Daniel! Oh my god! <laughs> Daniel is a host. We holy shit! David Turner. David. Oh my god! Who was that back there naked? Oh my god! Oh turn your camera off, Tavion. We already was living in the Jetson days, but now things are way more enhanced and advanced. We are wearing masks for the first time since the Spanish flu. Don't know when it's gonna go away. Atlanta was one of the first to reopen during the pandemic, but yet again, the CDC, the same niggas that's head of the health department, is in Atlanta. Now how that work? But y'all wanna blame everything on Florida, huh? Man, Florida crazy, bro. Throw that whole state away. Oh, you know it ain't nothing right about them Florida waters. Them people ain't wrapped tight. Yeah, you might be right, but let's not act like the world wasn't bringing their ass to Florida during COVID to hit the beaches and private islands, and then y'all wonder why our case is high? Ah, oh, hell no. Uh-uh. We not gonna let y'all do that. Gonna talk trash about us, but then bring y'all asses on over here. Nobody in Florida itching to go nowhere else, but y'all wanna come here. But I digress. Got vaccine trials that they trying to bring on everybody, but mainly black, poor, and health workers first. Also during this pandemic, since everybody been down on their ass, we all know that these hoes been spreading it. They've been busting it wide open since the beginning of the time. But now that COVID here, they done ran out of gigs for music videos, appearances, bragging rights, being flued out because of lockdown and country bands. Now they don't up their games to OnlyFans. And check this out, not only the women, but the niggas doing it too. Whether they showing their feet, pussy, dick, or knees, motherfucker, you got one too. Oh, you got one. All the good girls turned bad in 2020. I saw this girl, she had a whole master's degree. Went to school and all. Highly accomplished. COVID came, changed her online name. Next thing you know, OnlyFans. Twerking that ass on Twitter. Any platform you can see her. The pandemic done bought out a lot of people hustles for the good and the bad. Scamming done went up too. All this credit card, COVID-19 frauds going on and stuff. You know, all this time I've been telling y'all about ownership and not caring about the unpopular opinion because people will rarely grasp the next big thing you have to offer to the culture. But I don't knock the hustle though. These are tough times. These are tough times that we in. 
gotta get it how you live. Cause these $600 stimulus checks ain't nothing to be dependent on as you can see. Podcast. If 2020 ain't been a year to podcast, I don't know what then. <coughs> Shout out to 2017 Unspoken Truth. That's when it got started. <coughs> So 2020, people ain't have no choice but to pick out other hustles. But it didn't surprise me when everybody and their mama decided to pick up podcasting or become a social media influencer. The social media influencer thing was already on the rise, but the podcast game, not so much. It was on the rise, but well, damn, when COVID came, golly, bro, as soon as you turn on YouTube, everybody talking into a mic. 2020, we've had a chance to even witness a lab that once shitted on online influencers now end up doing the same damn thing in the same damn pool as us crazy how life works huh all that show money gone things halfway all the way shut down stopped a lot of public figures from eating especially these musicians oh a lot of them now we're seeing people like all these artists inking all these deals with apple spotify and other platforms to uphold a radio interview setting hey it is what it is though just remember who pool you in you and i pool now and up next, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. That definitely played their part in 2020. Those two names definitely played a part in 2020. Battling racial injustice amongst race soldiers pretending to be cops seemed to have awakened people so much that Black Lives Matter were put on the map globally. We all know how Black Lives Matter truly got started. Funded by white people, but the black folks are the mascot, the LGBTQ, this, that, and the third. We ain't gonna go too far into it. But I will say this, anything that's quote unquote for black folks that gets publicly broadcast by all these different networks and different sports teams and stuff like that, just know it ain't in the hands of black people at that point. That means white people making money off of it. So Black Lives Matter ain't independent at all. And if they up in there making money, it's only a select few of them. And they can't even reallocate that money the way they want to because they still got to report back to the dominant society on where they are going, what they are doing, what they're attacking, what the mission is. And it's crazy because Black Lives Matter does have a great stance behind it. I mean, Black Lives Matter. I mean, yeah, it matter. But when it's time for these college funds, tuition, Black LGBTQ members that get beat up within their own community and killed within their own community and Black Lives Matter don't come for them, but it got started by Black Lives Matter, where they be at? There's so much I can say. We not going into it. I said I'm going to stop. But yeah, it took a George Floyd and Breonna Taylor situation to at least get Black people on code. Because prior to their death, People walking around like racism didn't exist, even black folks. Man, that was back in the 1960s. What you mean racism? Man, that was when our grandma and them was little. Oh, that was so long ago. Yeah, and it took a Trump overt racism and broadcasting a lynching of black death to push the agenda so far, and I mean so far, that niggas ain't have no choice but to see things for what it is when it been like that since the get-go. George Floyd killer charge, but we awaiting his sentencing. And Breonna Taylor, well, we all know how that turned out. Attorney General Daniel Cameron ain't shit, right? Old nasty bastard ass coon. Just filthy, disgusting, wildin' out. Now, now I ain't here to talk bad about the people at wildin' out. I'm just here to speak on my experience and the facts. But the negativity ain't the point. But just like you and I know, know that regardless of which, they not only fried my ass, it was a setup hit for me during the show as well. That's obvious, and they even admitted it. Yeah, I can take my lickings, but I can't take lying and get my name played with. He flew me out there, did an interview, showed me how to flag other niggas for taking my video down. This nigga stole my money. Give me two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Let's just let's just let's 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 bid it at that. If you if you can give me two hundred seventy-five k right now, I I said everything can be good. I delete this video. That's what I thought. Brain man, nigga stole what? If you look at the YouTube policies, everybody get paid at the same fucking time. And I did, I did a little calculation of what both of them made just based off of what I know about YouTube and spoken reasons estimated probably made about close to $400,000 off that video within eight years. And then, um, Emmanuel Hudson made by a uh, total close to $200,000. So why are you complaining if you made close to $200,000? Oh, because he made more. Damn, how many views does that, that video they did got? Bro, that like shit, 60 million, bro. That, ooh, you know that's some money. Ooh, you know that's some money. Ooh, you 
No, that's some money. No, that's some money. No, that's some money. Oh, my mama, Damn. bro. One day later. One day later, you got 26 million views. If you listen to him and the way he presented that, you would think the video was up for a hot minute. This is why it makes it hard to work with black folks sometimes. Foresight. All you see is today. You don't see down the line. You don't see opportunity. What you were doing was counting his money. Dude, the video got 26 million views on your page. You made money off that video, bro. You made money off that video, bro. Bro. You see that on his Wikipedia page, he owes this man $275,000. What you telling me is I, I, I'm, I fly you out, put you in a hotel, enhance your product tenfold, introduce you to another way to make money off of that same product. Now you getting paid off the product in two different ways. At, at first you were just getting paid off of YouTube, but you was only getting probably like a third of the YouTube money because other people were posting that, your same video and you didn't know how to take them down. I helped you with that. Redo the product so it's worth more now. It's more palatable. And I redo the song with you so now you can make money off of just selling the song. So now you, now you got multiple streams of income off of this one piece of product that you did not have before, and I'm not supposed to get paid off of that? Emmanuel himself said it, he made like 40000 off of that video, or forty k a month, or whatever it was. He, something with a 40 in it. So he made a, a, a decent amount of money off of that video. So you made money. He made money. But he was the only one who spent and invested money up front. So he was supposed to get paid. I never spoken to reasons about it. <laughs> yeah. I can't do nothing but take Emmanuel's word for it. Yeah. We also live in a pull your car era where a lot of people want to expose. Oh, I'm going to expose. Let out the goodies. Oh, I see the goodies. So let me go ahead and make some tea. Put the tea on the internet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And everybody think that just because something got exposed and somebody got exposed, that is that is true. This is why you can't take niggas nowhere. Can't take them nowhere, man. We live in a world where people don't give a damn about the truth. And they only care about what sounds good and what's juicy to them. And just like a lot of others who experience what I've experienced amongst the people, I sat back and watched the world turn their back on me. Called me a fraud, thief, and all. With no proof. But nobody kept talking when I pulled them receipts out. It would fuck spoken reasons until the receipts hit the surface. And when Wild and I got canceled. But truth be told, again, I can take my lickings. But just being plain nasty to a celebrity guest? I guess God didn't make no mistakes when that show got cut off two, three weeks later. For good. Well, it might come back. But it's gone right now. I ain't celebrating it. It ain't my call. That's a legendary show. But you just can't get too comfortable. A lot of folks on that show was feeling themselves because they was happy, they had a job, and they was on TV. Me, I've been chasing my own since the beginning. Never depended on anybody to give me a leg up. Everything built on my end was all me. All me. You gotta watch how you treat people. Like I said, a lot of them got way too comfortable. Nick knew where his help came from. Came from white folks. Yeah, black people support him. But let's be real, y'all know what it is. We know what it is. And you gonna be quote unquote pro-black and shit on the same people that cut your check? Let me take that back. Not shit on them. In their eyes, he shitted on them. But in the rest of our eyes, he would just tell the niggas what was up. I get it. But then I have to try to right his wrongs and was caught on multiple attempts trying to get back good with them folks. Hey, do what you gotta do. But ever since then, he ain't been woke cannon. And ever since then, you ain't seen that show neither. I ain't saying I'm the sole reason, but I will say it was highly ironic how it played out after me. Let's be real, no matter what they say, the best and most memorable episode in the new school, especially, came when I hit the stage in Azalea Banks. The negative shit, regardless. People don't want to talk about it, but it's facts. But like I say, I don't like my name played with. And what did I learn from that situation? Don't go nowhere where you ain't wanted. That's what I learned from that situation. All the rest of that shit, I'm cool. God bless everybody, for real. At the end of the day, we all black. I don't wish no harm, no evil towards nobody way. Because at the end of the day, I don't call the shots. I, I ain't the end all be all. God is. But just know, when that moment happened to me, I already knew something was probably going to pop off. Because I knew that it was pull your card season. And I knew for a fact that I was going to get my card pulled. I just ain't no way in or where. But I'm here to tell you. 
2020 pulled everybody card, not only just mine, everybody card. Financially, spiritually, emotionally, career-wise, your sanity piece. And I got this thing called, every dog has their day. You gonna have your day. That's what happened to me, and it happened to everybody else as well. And if it ain't happened to you, your day coming too. Whether it's online, personally, behind the scene, it don't matter. You gonna get this work. Next up, R. Kelly locked up, still on pending charges. Weinstein got the key thrown away. And Bill Cosby thugging it out in his mugshot. Ain't taking shit back. Shot not boosting them on social media. Bill Cosby said, y'all keep that same energy because Bill going up for parole, I heard. We black people, we rock with Boosie. Niggas, we rock with, we, we fuck with him. You know, he got shot in the leg, but still out here doing shows, living his best life, cruising in that wheelchair, making it look easy. Now that's what you call enjoying your life, no matter the circumstance. Life can be hard, but you got to take it with a grain of salt and see the blessing in everything. People don't know if Tori or Megan ex-friend shot Megan or if she just plain lying. And Megan and Cardi B set the net off with some wet ass pussy. Let's not forget Cardi B said she don't cook or clean. Alright? Moving on. Versus kept everybody in quarantine entertained. How you go act like my neck don't clean? Haters get sprayed like Afro sheen, but they don't ever really wanna pop them bang. You know For you to sleep on when you kill your homeboy You left your son to be a bouncer Won't even raise your homeboy Damn Damn Broke the internet I tell you what Put that nigga ass in the dirt I tell you what Smoking on Pookie Load tonight Vibe That's a vibe Yeah uh, That's a vibe It's a vibe Giving artists an opportunity to boost their streams while lacking shows. And Kevin Samuels telling a young woman 20 year olds are not necessarily attracted to 45 year olds. Bullshit. I'm 51 and I, and I can't beat them off with a stick. That's what would you rank yourself on a scale from one to 10? Would I rate myself? Just your face. Um, my face when I wake up, five, but when I put myself together, six. If you give yourself a five, that's average. Average looking women tend not to get high earning men. They tend to get average men, breathe and digest. You're 35 years old. You don't tend to see higher earning men with average looking women. I mean, my body is not average, so. But you're, ma'am, you, please don't make me say it. Say what? I'm so. giving you, I'm giving you advice, but you're not taking it. This gets worse every time I say something. And now you're asking for a man who's in the top 10% of men. You don't qualify for one. Why can't you just get a man that's an average guy? Sometimes I feel like. Uh, you can feel like what you want to, but women like you die alone. Straight up, because you think you're better than the men that you qualify for. I can see a woman like yourself really thinking you deserve more is because you earn more because you earn more money than most people around you in North Carolina. But if your ass worked at the post office, you would not think so highly of your opportunities. Men don't care about your money. We care about the fact that you are older and you got kids and you're average and your reality of your life has showed you that you don't have the kind of men that you want knocking on your door trying to find you. Most people get average people, especially average people. And you're an average person. You've been making six figures for the last three years. Okay. Damn. Cold blooded. That's cold, though. Hey, the truth, though. But I ain't gonna get into it. Y'all already know how I go, because that dude was hella, hella viral and entertaining last year towards the end of the year. I, I feel like he stole 2020 towards the end of the year. 
he set the whole internet off. So I, I feel like he deserved an Olympic internet trophy for his virality and keeping niggas' attention, whether it was good or bad, it had people talking. I think Kevin Samuels stole the show towards the end of 2020. I think it's safe to say. If you feel like I'm right and all in favor, say I in the comment section. But yeah, man, we are still in a system of dominance. Yeah, Trump is out of office. Things are more covert with Biden and Harris, but stay woke. They know we know all about the crime bill and locking up black folks. Kamala and Joe know. They know we know. We still got to keep putting up points on the board and not be dependent of the government or anybody. 2021 is going to be all about stacking your paper and protecting your temple. Point blank, period. If you are already humble, you don't owe nobody an explanation for why you switching gears or boosting your price. If you want it, rocking with it, they support, you support, that's just how it goes. But we can't be in a pandemic and not understand the importance of survival at all costs, including your peace. We all made it past 2020, the 21st century, bruh. There's a lot of people that didn't make it, especially with this COVID stuff. I lost my photographer not too long ago. Rest in peace, Ken Cordell. Rest in power. I smoked a lot. And I beat a lot of motherfuckers ass in the past. Now I got this. The Nigaderm CQ patch, with unique extended release technology, helps prevent you from taking off on niggas. I remember two weeks ago I was up in the club. Homeboy spilled hot sauce on my shoe. Of course I'm gonna get mad, I'm a brother. I said, man, you stepped on my shoe. He said, F you. I said, look. Saved by the nigga Dern. Thanks, nigga Dern. I went to Chipotle the other day. I almost fucked the Chipotle lady up. I asked clearly no veggies in my burrito. This motherfucker include that shit. Thanks to my nigga Dern. Ate that shit anyway. Nigga Dern CQ. I got like seven, eight family members that caught it all at once last year, trying to get the school thing situated with my kid doing a virtual thing and putting them in school and virtual, you know, all this stuff going back and forth. Can't see my grandma, she locked up in the dang old nursing home. They allowing 15 minute visits when they do open it. My grandma locked up in the nursing home for about six, seven months of 2020. My mama and other family members, especially my mom, used to send her every day. It's a lot going on. But 2021 is a reset to start a new world because ain't nothing gonna ever be the same again for the majority of us. That life you once knew pre-COVID is gone. Gone, bro. All the times you once seen large, close, sold out crowds and sold out arenas, seeing everybody arm to arm with no space, all up under each other, that ain't coming back. All the digital interviews instead of in person and took over, robots making this move right now in full effect, bro. Oh, robots about to take the hell over. The other day, I forgot what store I was in, but I remember them having cashiers in the past, not too long ago. Man, I walked up in that store, man. I only seen one cashier. Everybody else had to scan their shit. I said, damn, not only are we in COVID, hell, self-checkout put niggas out of the game. And that's just self-checkout. Imagine all the other shit that's important in life besides self-checkout. But yeah, man, moving on. Next up, Jake Paul and Nate Robinson. Hey, man, shout out to Nate Robinson, bruh. True soldier, that's our brother right there, all right? I don't care what y'all say, Nate, is our brother. We stand by Nate. We defend Nate. We for Nate. Nate for us. Team Nate. That Jake Paul and Nate Robinson fight, that kind of stole the show towards the end of the year too. That was hella entertaining. Didn't turn out the way we wanted, but it was hella entertaining. The Mike Tyson and Roy Jones, that was cool too, but it was crazy because the Jake Paul and Nate Robinson fight, that was a door opener for YouTubers and social media influencers. So when Jake Paul won that fight, regardless, if he white or whatever that still was a w for social media influencers to be like look y'all already know the internet runs the world well who's the part of the entertainment on the internet y'all better take us seriously and this is why floyd is about to fight his brother logan paul logan about to get his ass whooped everybody know it logan paul floyd mayweather <laughs> let's talk about it Floyd's gonna be his fucking ass <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. He's gonna fight back, though. You don't think there's an opportunity to land a big punch on Floyd? Let me tell you something about <laughs> Floyd. He's in that gym. He, he retired, but he stayed in the gym. He can't help it. He doesn't have a vice. Yeah. He doesn't have a vice. No, he does. The gym. He ain't even got no W's. No W's at all. He lost to a YouTuber, a black YouTuber. One tie, one loss. And you about to fight Floyd, and Floyd about to whoop your ass. Will and Jada, entanglement. Entanglement, entanglement, entanglement. That was a highlight for the summer. I think that was around like July. That stole the show for the summer. The entanglement season. The Will and Jada situation for 2020 was probably something they didn't like, but was highly important for the world to see. In the clout chasing, celebrity dick and click riding society that we live in, we tend to put too much emphasis on public figures. Got these niggas on a pedestal like they got or something. Now, cancel culture has been placed here to weed out the BS. Although cancel culture can be extremely toxic, it does have some good to it. But when it comes to Will and Jada, it was good to see that play out for the world because for years, everybody was on their, I want to be on that Will and Jada love, that Will and Jada love. I got a song called Real Love. I did back in 2014 about that. Crazy. Real love, please tell me what is real love, what you see on TV. They human. They ain't perfect. What else is new? That was important in the pull your car era to get folks to focus on what the hell they got going on in their own relationships and life. Can't be looking at these people on TV and the internet trying to live through them because they giving you the best version of themselves for a few seconds or minutes out the day. That's crazy. Well, August Alcina, I'm just go ahead and just say this, man. August, the season is over with, bruh. I think all that Jada riding a Jada wave along with Will, I think he done ran out of cars. I think he did. But Jada got a car pulled, y'all. Will got his car pulled too, regardless whether he did it or not. He got his car pulled because that's his wife. His personal life has been exposed. Whether the situation was real or not, still got your car pulled. See how it works? See what I mean? Boy, everybody named Mama was talking about that Will and Jada shirt. Jump was so bad, Jada cut her comments off on her Instagram for a while. I'm like, damn, never would I have ever thought I would see this day. But that goes to show you, 2020 was revealing to show everybody is human, bro. We got problems. We face things. We run into challenges. Just like anybody else. No different. 2020 only revealed to everybody, especially the people that didn't see the illusion that he was swimming in, that life is real and that you are human. You aren't perfect. I'm gonna sit your ass down around all the belongings and surroundings of every decision that you have made previously to 2020. You gonna sit right there in that crib. Everything you see around you is the result of the decision that you have made previously and you gotta sit in that. Whether you like your space or not, whether you like your spouse, your computer, the gadgets around your crib, your finances, your car, your dog, your watch, shoes, don't matter. You gotta sit right there. And let me go ahead and snatch some things away from you while you at it or restrict you from your normal schedule. Matter of fact, everybody on the same program. Now what? You human. Oh, you bolster? All right, let me take that away. Reset for everybody. Now start from here. Start from scratch from here now. And only the strong will survive, y'all. That's why you need to take care of your temple. I mean, take care of your temple, bro, for real. 2020, I would say, probably raised a lot of addiction as well and depression. So I pray for everybody that's facing any type of detriment towards their lives. I pray for everybody in their situations, man. I pray that everybody will keep their head above the waters. But unfortunately, everybody ain't gonna keep their head above the waters. But I pray for the strong. I pray for the weak as well, too. But y'all gotta tighten up, bro. Y'all gotta meet God halfway. Strengthen up. Get on your game. Try to save every single dollar if you can. Try to develop and keep as many assets as possible. As much as possible. Stock up, stock up, stock up. Load up on knowledge, protect your temple, eat right. It's okay to turn up, bruh. 
I get it. I drink and I smoke. I'm working on it. Trust me, but protect your temple. You don't got beat up in 2020, bro. A lot of folks don't got their ass woke. They don't got beat up. Now dust yourself off, pick your chin up, and face the music. Because 2021 ain't finna be that easy either. As you can see, walking into 2021, Dr. Dre got brain aneurysm in the ICU. That's a huge blow. Man, I hope he pulled through, for real. That's crazy. And not only that, but do y'all see how these white folks are cutting up? Do you see it though? Can't hardly even finish my New Year's drink without seeing all the chaos of Trump supporters mad crashing DC Capitol Hill. And black people already know this was privilege at its finest. Oh yes it was. Let me tell you what I liked about what I saw a few days ago about that situation that happened in DC. I love the fact that the majority of black people were on coal. I mean I don't get it twisted. There were a couple of black folks out there that I saw. Even saw one brother trying to square up with a Trump supporter until he realized he was outnumbered and was out there by his goddamn self. Nigga, if you don't sit your ass down somewhere. That's the energy black folks had as a whole if we spotted anybody black out there. Because there was no reason for us to be involved. That wasn't our fight. Usually, especially if this was 2018, 2020 or prior, black folks would have found an excuse, any type of an excuse, to be a part of white problems. And the reason why I think it all turned out like that for black folks is because, like I said previously, 2020 kicked our ass. Nigga, we just finished eating our greens and black eyed peas. We done burnt our sage and rubbed blessed oil on folks' head. If you a church head, if you a church head but ain't been to church in years, New Year's was the time where a lot of black folks would have got up and, and, and went to church. They would have got off their ass and went to church in 2020 for real for New Year's. Because that's just how stressful the year 2020 has been. So we ain't trying to get up in your shit, bruh. You on your own. Yeah, black folks, yeah, we used to going through stuff. But again, a lot of folks weren't on code and had to be reminded by reality. And going into 2021 trying to fight another race fight is completely insane. They never do it for us. You seen how them officers were walking the Trump supporters and racists all down the stairs. They were straight assisting them. In probably one of the most rebellious times in history. U.S. history. We as black folks already knew, and the rest of the world knew that had that would have been black folks out there breaking all in Capitol Hill, it would have been a goddamn bloodbath. It would have been free kill day. Free massacre day. Oh, they would have took full advantage to make sure history and his story would have been marked down and told. If it had been that many niggas in Capitol Hill all behind the desk, breaking the windows, climbing all up the fucking walls. Which gets me to this point, and I don't even know how in the hell them white folks were climbing up them walls. Y'all seen that? They can't ever call us monkeys the way they asses were acting. Them jokers were sticking to the walls like Spider-Man. Looked like some Marvel movie type shit. Yeah, don't call us monkeys. We see who the real ones are. <laughs> White folks straight cut a monkey fool. That shit was hella funny to me. I ain't gonna lie. Even the white folks with no arms and legs came out all turned up trying to put their beard in. One thing you can take from the situation that white folks sure as hell know how to do and that's stay on cold. Four people got shot and killed and one woman was even caught on camera dying. She got shot all up in the neck. Officer shot in the neck after people were trying to break in, trying to get to the workers in Capitol Hill. And that was kind of expected. I mean, you got to make an example out of somebody to at least show the, the world and the government that we ain't no bitch or nothing like that. I get it. So they had a few sacrifices. But at the end of the day, they was on code. Hardly anybody was hurt like that. Yeah, four people got killed or a few got hurt, but the, the way it could have really been, they ain't really did nothing. Just a bunch of turning up and yelling and breaking shit. When black people come in numbers in places like DC, they get on cold so much, the military be ready for their ass before they even get there sometime. You see, white people know exactly what we capable of. They know we ain't stupid, they know we smart, but they know what we capable of for the most part. They know what we willing to really do and what our limitations are. Cause we not crazy like them. They for the most time don't think we're gonna commit crimes like blowing up shit. Those officials were nervous because they knew A, these are their own people out here and they don't want to harm them, want to preserve numbers because the race is already on a decline, and B, white people just plain crazy and they didn't know which one of them white folks was serious about committing a crazy act. Anything literally could have happened. They were out there making bomb threats, all kind of stuff. Black people don't call in making bomb threats. Hell, we say something like that on the phone, the U.S. Marshals will be at our house before we even walk out the door. That's what got me thinking the government was in on this. Ain't no way that many motherfuckers breaking to Capitol Hill, bro. And y'all just let it go down like that. Which they were because of Trump. We know Trump and his administration had this planned up their sleeves for a while. Hell, he talked about it. He called the hit early on that day. 
and then beat it on down like okay 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 it's over oh yeah it's over we want it to be peaceful uh respect the laws of the land uh yeah but you motherfucker with the cheater style you heard me bitch white folks be on cold white folks be on cold because all it took for trump to say it was over go home now even though we were robbed, uh, respect the authorities of the law. And they all stopped what they were doing, packed their shit, and went home like nothing happened. Them rednecks were looking around like, ah, 45 said it was over? Ah, come on, Bob, let's go. Let's get our shit and go hunt some deers. Still some bullshit, Dave. Black people, I don't know not one black person that can make niggas just go home when they say just go home and just say when they done. Maybe Farrakhan, that's about it. Minister Farrakhan, I think that's the only one who can probably do it. Hell, T.D. Jakes can't even get niggas to do it. But that code is a hell of a thing, ain't it? Mind your business. Protect your temple. What ain't your fight ain't your problem. Period. Let me tell you what they really thought was going to happen. Those white supremacists thought they could bait black folks to go out there and get involved in a trap. That's what they thought. And it's crazy how we all as black folks smelt it without saying it. That was crazy. Those white supremacists weren't out there expecting to just see them. They were expecting Black Lives Matter to join the party so they could get us in the mix. If we was out there fighting with them, then it would have been for real free bloodshed because it's black bodies around now. Now it's free game. Which means black bodies are free game when it comes to systematic oppression. White supremacy. But yeah, man. Let me bring it on down. All this shit gonna be challenging, bro. Life is 99% process and 1% result. Challenges ain't gonna never end. Your last challenge is gonna be when you leave the earth. That's it. Then you ain't got no more. At least in the physical room. But yeah, man. I love y'all. appreciate y'all. Make sure you go to SpokenReasonTV.com. Go subscribe. Become a member. The entire store is 50% off if you purchase anything past 20 bucks. You got to put in the promo code FCHW. 50% off will be cut off maybe in a few days. So go ahead and take advantage. Take advantage. Take advantage. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Spoken Reason YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell. If you're watching this right now, I heard that if you have an old account and you've been subscribed to me years ago and you're not getting my stuff, I heard that you got to unsubscribe, subscribe again, and then just hit the notification bell. So like, all. Oh. So I heard you got to do that too. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's some internet stuff. You know how I go. But yeah, man. I'm out, man. I love y'all. appreciate y'all. It's your boy JB, aka Spoken. And uh, yeah, 2021. We got some stuff going on. Love y'all, appreciate y'all, and I'm out.